Here's a good example. Anybody know what kind of bark this is? This was Houdino Shoney housing material 101. This is red elm bark. See the red? This is what we used to cover our houses with to live. The trees were so big, you could get a sheet of bark that is larger than this uh, screen off of a section of the tree. Now, the other thing, though, you know how cold it's been. Can you imagine living in a house that's only covered with this bark? And maybe a corn husk liner, or maybe a mat reed, or maybe a fur robe. You had to be hardier <laughs> to live a long time ago, because you literally are living in nature. Today, you know, no matter what the weather is, we can walk inside and turn up the thermostat, you know, or if it's raining outside, we don't get wet or too cold, we don't even feel like going to work. But in the old days, the work never ends because your life never ends. You're constantly doing things, which of course is why you're more physically fit. The minute you grow up like me, the television generation, right, all of a sudden, you know, my, my grandfather was uh, pretty hardy, a farmer. My dad grew up as a farmer, became an iron worker. I became a teacher and got fat and lazy. So what does that tell you? Anyway, this elm bark is very important to our people. The problem is the Dutch elm tree disease wiped out our primary source of uh, protection. The French also did their best to destroy that. They burned down a lot of our longhouses. But I'm going to pass this around because what's amazing to me about this is that there's still some trees uh, around, but it's such a versatile material. And uh, they were able to make uh, trays like this for serving food, to cover the longhouses, make all that stuff. So part of indigenous knowledge, Haudenosaunee knowledge, is learning how you do that. First of all, how many of us even know what an elm tree looks like, a red elm tree looks like? You have to know that. You have to know where they grow. You have to know when the best time to pull the bark off the tree. You have to know how to pull it off. And then you have to learn how to keep it from getting moldy. Because wood, when it gets wet, this is wet when it comes off the tree. If you're not careful, you'll be living in mold house. Anyway, let me pass that around and think about that. Now, that's a serving tray. That's where they would serve the food. But because the other thing is, uh, food is a living thing. It has a spirit to it. The tree is a living thing, has a spirit to it. We're a living thing with spirit to it. So really, in preparing food from, the, from nature, cooking it in natural made materials, and then feeding it to your mat naturally enhanced uh, family is like superfood. See what I mean? It boosts you up. It might not taste as good as Tim Hortons on it, but it is stuff that gets you going. So in other words, even that tray has power. It has a spirit. It has a feeling to it. So when you put your food in there and serve that to your family, you're enriching the whole thing. Now the reason we used to live in an old longhouse, and some of those old longhouses were longer than from here to the edge of this building. The longest longhouse that I've ever uh, read about was 350 feet long. That's the length of a modern um, football field. But because of that, everybody living in the longhouse uh, together, <laughs> you could help, we had to take care of each other. Young boys come into the longhouse, well, they gather up firewood, put it there. Uh, they're out hunting, they bring the meat in, and they walk down the longhouse and share it with people. Uh, everything, everything belongs to everybody, and everybody helps to keep it going. And that's really kind of important. 